Alrighty, it's uh, Monday, January 23rd. We are now into our third week of the Big Bang Theory RL. Woohoo! And so far, uh, our <laughs> subscriptions remain constant at three. Uh, but uh, I hope we'll get up there soon. Uh, Although I said it's only been three weeks, uh, uh, we are moving up into the double digits in views. Well, we're still below 50. So, not bad, but not good either. It is what it is. I guess it would help if I were, uh, you know, a cute teenager or something like that talking about the science, you know. Uh, but I am what I am. So, as I said, Big Bang Theory RL. Ugh. Geek on, uh, geek on YouTube. So, um, yesterday, uh, I was supposed to be work, and I actually did work on, um, uh, on the Omega Construct, was, uh, doing the general outline for it, uh, uh, then I started doing some reading into it, and, uh, well, one thing led to another, and I ended up, uh, simply strolling around, uh, YouTube for a bit, well, not for a bit, for a couple of hours. <laughs> what can you do? I ended up uh, all over the place. Uh, but I, uh, I can't remember where I started, uh, but I do know where I ended up. Uh, I ended up uh, listening to some classical music and some tunes from Vangelis, uh, particularly uh, listening to the theme song from Cosmos. That was a, uh, a show on PBS in the 1970s. Uh, this is before Discovery came around, so yeah, and there was a before Discovery. Uh, that's when actually where I kind of grew, the science that I grew up with uh, on TV was uh, PBS. It was Nova, Nature. Uh, those were the two particular ones, and there was another one called Vista. Uh, Horizons from BBC was still around, but it was being broadcast under another name. So, it, you know. PBS really had a good uh, uh, selection of science shows. It's actually better than it was, better than it is now. I looked at the science shows they have now, and they're well, they're quite substandard compared to what they had before. But then again, most science funding today is uh, politically and socially oriented. It's not as science oriented, science oriented as it once was. So. Uh, what are you going to expect? They're basically playing their their their, uh, their documentaries for their funders, and so uh, as you watch in the documentary, every so often these key words, these buzzwords, uh, to sort of please their funders, come up and uh, are interjected into the science. So. Eh. Well, what am I going to do to complain? You know, well, actually what I do, I'm going to do, and this is what I have decided to do, is sort of uh, create my own channel, Physics TV. This is sort of a, 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 a beginning of it. Uh, this is one of the shows that's going to be appearing on, uh, that's appearing on Physics TV as well. Uh, Physics TV is another channel on YouTube. So, uh, but I will be working on some documentaries. For it. I am still working on the uh, Mayan calendar uh, documentary. That's particularly the one on uh, the whole issue surrounding 2012. Uh, it is not going to be a, woo, it's 2012, it's the end of the world. It's going to be more of a look at astronomical calendars and their roles in the development of society uh, because we up until uh, the yeah, it's up until the 1800s uh, because the uh, the Harvard Observatory was actually founded on an astronomical calendar which was known as the Julian calendar today uh, astronomers don't use the Julian calendar as the Julian calendar anymore, but neither did they use the new calendar, which is the Gregorian calendar. The European, the, the current calendar that everyone uses today, we celebrate New Year's Eve on, is the Gregorian calendar, 
that came into use in the United States uh, uh, around mm, a little after the 1800s. So it's it's it, it, it's it's well into American history. Uh, the American Naval Observatory, the Harvard Observatory, was already established before this. Uh, so a lot of the groundbreaking astronomical work, the sort of the beginning in, in the early early part of uh, uh, American history, uh, was done under the Julian calendar, which is the Egyptian astronomical calendar. It's so basically the Ptolemaic calendar. The, that's what the Julian calendar is. Uh, it was developed uh, under the Ptolemies uh, in, in ancient Egypt, uh, in Alexandria. It was modified by Julius Caesar and then moved forward till t today. Uh, and today it continues on as in, in, in astronomy and astrophysics. NASA uses it as uh, Julian date. is known as, you see the period, is G every time you see the period, is G the, the, the abbreviation JD, right? J period, D period. Uh, that stands for Julian date. This is the guy who um, turned it into a calculation, but it's basically, it's not really a calculation. It's, it's a way of, of uh, adding in the hours, minutes, and seconds as a decimal of the day. So imagine counting up the number of days from the beginning of the, Julius, the, the Julian calendar up to the current point now and you have your days, or should say even you, you, you know, in some cases your months, you know, months, days, and hours, seconds, as the various different decimal places. So that's what the Julian date is. And he really didn't do anything. He says it's just it's, it's, it's a minor conversion from the normal calendar that we're used to seeing into a a a, a digital number so that and the, it, one of the reasons why this became uh easy to use and it is usable because it is a digital number your computer date can be set by you know they really they haven't done this conversion to a proper calendar uh for any of the other calendars uh it doesn't work on the Jul on the Gregorian calendar so most of the computer calendars, anything that's calculated, uh, uses Julian date. Uh, this includes GPS, your satellites, uh, radio astronomy, uh, your, uh, any of these space-going satellites. They're all set and programmed in Julian date. So this is where it's gone today. It's sort of hidden behind the scenes uh, in astronomy and your technical aspects of the computer. Uh, it's not viewed and seen by the average public. So that's the uh, the, the uh, documentary that I'm working on for uh, the Mayan calendar. It's going to it's going to be on the astronomical calendars. It will look at the so-called uh, implications of, of why the calendars are ending and what possible consequences it could have uh, for Earth. And this is where you take these consequences and you extrapolate them out and you get into the mysticism of, uh, of the 2012 uh, doomsday predictions. So that was, that, was the, that was yesterday. That was what I was primarily doing yesterday. Uh, I also looked at uh, Nerds RL. Uh, I watched a couple of their episodes again. Uh, caught up. I, ha I hadn't watched it for a couple of days. Uh, that's kind of my standard to sort of see uh, uh, where my show is going. Uh, I found they were watching, uh, actually not watching, uh, doing their video editing. And this, what you're seeing here, is not edited. That was sort of my decision. Watching Nerds RL, most of their comments are edited except for uh, Edit Free Friday. And I decided to do these comments here, the comments X. Comments X are the unedited, uncensored 
uh, continuous uh, comments. So this is the this is the unedited part of the vlog. For the edited part of the vlog, these are going to be the comments Y and now the comments Omega. Comments Y are the comments I make to various different people as I stroll around YouTube. Comments Omega uh, is going to be the uh, Omega construct. This is when I have something a uh, comment that I need to specifically make that will be edited. Uh, they will get their own comment section. They use, and I, they finally said what they were using. They, they said they were, uh, I think her name is Cassandra. Yeah, that's Cassandra. She said she uses uh, Final Cut Pro. That's a, prof that's a professional software. It costs a, 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 a fair chunk of change. Uh, unless, of course, you know, you got it off of one of the torrent sites. and <laughs> Then it doesn't cost a chunk of change because it's, well, basically pirated. Uh, this, uh, the pirateware. That's, that's the only way you can get stuff free on PC is you, 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 you have to use pirate rare, pirate rare. Uh, or, or, or most people won't choose to use open source on, on PC. Well, some people do. Uh, the open source is the primary choice. If, if you're doing op open source on, on PC, you find yourself more and more in open source, then you need to move, should be moving over to Linux because Linux is the base of open source. Uh, anyways, uh, I have two video editors uh, on Linux. These are open source that I'm going to try. I've been working with them with a bit for a bit. I'm going to be doing all my stuff. My edited the uh, comments, uh, the comments Y and the comments Omega will be done in, in uh, these two uh, open source editors. I'm going to try and bring them to the point that they function as well as uh, Final Cut Pro in terms of the end results. So uh, this is where I'm going with that, uh, and in terms of the last, going, going back to uh, the uh, the Omega construct, which is sort of going to be coming up. Uh, uh, I hope to finish the, the major outline today. Uh, it looks like I've more or less got it done, and the Omega construct is going to basically include uh, observations from astronomy, astrophysics, chemistry, organic chemistry. And it's going to be uh, encompassed by the mathematical uh, constructs from calculus, pr primarily known as limits. So that's about it for now. Uh, I said I'm going to try to get more of the uh, I'm going to try to get more of the comments out today, and this will be comments Y and comments Omega. So uh, this is it for comments X.